hello guys welcome to my channel in this video i'll be making a cow neck dress with side slit and which and i'll be drafting it on my paper first before transferring it to my fabric i'll be working on my half length first on my half length my shoulder measurement divided by two that's eight inches i will mark it down from that eight inches i'll be coming down by one inch and I'm going to indicate that down and it to serve as my shoulder slope. So I'm going to take my ruler and connect it to my neckline area. From that one inch, I'll be coming down by eight inches and it to serve as my armhole line. From that point I just drew, I'm going to take my ruler and draw my chest line from that armhole line that I indicated. That will be my chest line. Then I'm going to take my ruler and draw a straight line from the shoulder slope to my chest line. And that will be my arm O line. On that arm O line, I'm going to be dividing my arm O measurements by 2. And that will give me 4 inches. I'm going to mark down the 4 inches. From the 4 inches, I'll be going in by half an inch. Then I'm going to blend the half an inch to the current ammo line to my chest line and that will serve as my new ammo line. I'm going to be starting my measurement from the main shoulder before I took my shoulder slope. My shoulder to my bust is 10 inches. I just made a point on the paper. From my shoulder to my waist is 15 inches and I'm going to take my ruler and draw a straight line of those dots I made and this is my boss point and my waistline. For my neckline I'm going to take the width and the depth of 3 inches. It's not necessary to take your neckline measurements though I'm just doing it for doing sake and I'm going to connect it with my curve after. I'm going to be inserting my body measurements. My round boss is 36 divided by 4 plus 2 would give me 11. I'm going to mark the 11 on my chest line and I'm going to mark the 11 inches on my boss points too. For my waist, my waist is 27 inches divided by 4 would give me 7 inches plus 2 inches allowance i took 9 inches so i'm going to use my ruler and connect all the dots together also for my shoulder slope i'm going to be coming down by 3 inches which i just made a point there and i'm going to use my ruler to draw a straight line there and I'm going to be cutting on the straight line. I'm going to cut that part out. And I'll be trimming up the excess parts of the paper I don't need. And this is going to serve as my back pattern. My fabric is folded into two for the back and I added two inches to it as my zip allowance. So I'm going to trace the pattern paper on it and cut out the excess parts I don't need. And this is what is looking like after cutting it. On my zip, I'm going to be making this adjustment on the allowance. I'm going to be tracing out one inch downward. I'm going to be connecting all the points I made on the fabric with my ruler in a straight line. Then I'm going to cut it out. For the down part of the zip allowance, I'll be going up by 1 inch. Then I'm going to be coming in by half an inch from that 1 inch. 1 inch then half an inch on the other side of the fabric I'll be marking down the two inches allowance I added to it
Then I'm going to use my shop to connect from that half an inch to that two inches in a slanted way. And I'm going to cut that part out. I'm making this adjustment so that my zip will be balanced on my fabric. After cutting it, I'm going to trace the half an inch I came in by. I'm going to trace it upward and cut it out. For my neckline, I'm going to be coming down by 2 inches and I'm going to trace it upward. You can decide to leave yours this way or you can decide to extend it down. It depends on what you want. I'm going to be bringing in the pattern paper I just used to cut the back for the front and I'm going to be cutting that chest line downward. I'm not going to cut everything out but I'm going to cut it just wash the way I do it. This is what I'll get after cutting it. This part is very essential because this is what is going to form the cow neck. So I'm going to place the paper on my fabric, I'm going to fold my fabric into two and place this on it and extend it the way I want it. I'm going to extend mine by 6 inches, just the way I spread it out on my paper, just like that, make sure yours is like that. So if you want yours to fall more, you can go down by 7 or 8 inches, but if you want it to be moderate like mine, go for 6 inches, it depends on what you want. So I'm going to use my shock to trace the paper on my fabric, then I'm going to cut it out. After cutting that, I'm going to fold another fabric into two and place what I just cut on it to cut out the facing. It's going to serve as the lining I'm going to use inside. I'm going to do that for the back also. For the skirts, I'm going to be drafting the front pattern first before drafting for the back. It's folded into two because it has a side slit. The line I just drew is my waistline. From my waist to my hip, I'm going to be taking 9 inches. I just made the point there and I'm going to use my ruler to draw a straight line. And I'm marking down the length of my dress also, but I'm going to increase the length on my fabric. Then I'll be inserting my body measurement. My round waist is 28 inches divided by 2 give me 7 plus 2 inches allowance. I'll be taking 9 inches for my waist. For my hip, my hip measurement is 37 inches divided by 4 inches would give me 9.25 plus 2 inches seam allowance I'll be having 11.25 for the length I'm going to be taking 10 inches. On the skirt I'm going to be marking down my bust pan measurement that is my nipple to nipple which is 4 inches I'm going to mark that down on the waistline on the hip line and the length which I, I just did and I'm going to take my ruler and connect it all on a straight line downward. On my waistline I'm going to be going in by half an inch on both sides of my bust pan line. 
then i'll be coming down by four inches and that will serve as my dart i'm going to connect them together that is my dart line On the length of the skirt, I'm going to be going in by 1 inch on both sides of the bust pan. For my hip line, I'm going to be coming down by 8 inches. Then I'm going to connect the two 1 inch on both sides to it. And that will be my slit line. Note that if you want your slit to, uh, your slit rather to be deep, you can go in by seven or six inches but if you want it to just be moderate you can come down by eight inches it will be okay so i'm going to add back the inches i lost while adding my darts from for my waistline the darts on both sides that i took together is one inch so i'm going to replace one inch back i'm adding it to the current measurements i took for that place i did not add anything there so i'm just going to leave it for the leg of for the length rather I, I lost two inches there so i'm going to add back the two inches at the length so i'm going to trace the new points all together Then I'm going to cut out the excess parts of the paper I don't need. So this is what is looking like after cutting out the excess parts. So I want to trace my darts on the other side. I'm doing this so that my ink will stain the other side. Then I'm going to turn it over and do and repeat the same process I just did yet. I'm going to draw a straight line and measure it if it's up to 4 inches. It's not up to, so I'm going to extend it to the 4 inches. Then I'm going to connect the 2 half an inch on both sides to that line. And that will be my dart for the other side. I'm going to open up my paper and cut this out. I'm going to cut that part out then cut on the straight line. Sorry, I didn't know my camera was not covering everything. So I went ahead to fold my front pattern on my back pattern. I added 2 inches allowance, zip allowance to the front pattern and I'm going to be tracing my hip line from the front pattern to the back pattern, also my waistline. So I'm going to be tracing the excess parts of the back pattern so it will be exactly like the front pattern so i'm going to remove the front pattern from it and i'm going to extend my line from where my waistline and my hip line stopped at the back pattern i'm going to draw a straight line at that area and label it as my zip allowance This is the adjustment I'll be making on my zip. I'm going to be going out by 1 inch downward to my hip line. Then I'm going to go to my length and measure 1 inch also. After measuring this upward a bit, I'm going to come down by 5 inches from my hip line and I'm going to stop marking the 1 inch there. So I'm going to connect all the dots together.
please don't mind my funny cup at that a part but while cutting it i'm going to trim it properly so it will not have that kind of shape so this is what the zip part is looking like for the back that i'm going to be marking in my nipple to nipple point that is four inches i'm going to indicate that down with a point then i'm going to go down by five inches after going down by five inches i'm going to trace half an inch on both sides just like i did for the front and i'm going to be connecting them all with my ruler and that's it for the darts So I went ahead to use my paper to cut my fabric. I folded my fabric into two, that's the back, and I traced my dart on the fabric and notched that area. For the front also, I placed one side on the front on my fabric and I'm going to cut. Remember I told you guys I'll be extending the length of my dress on my fabric. I went ahead to minus the 15 inches I took as my half length from from it then measured downward and i got 51 inches so the total length of this gown i'm making is 51 inches i'm going to trim the excess material from it and trace my that on that part also and that's it for the front I went ahead also to use my paper to cut the other side of the front. This is what the two piece of the front is looking like and I'm going to join it to the stopping point of my slit. I'm going to join it from my waistline to the stopping point of the slit. So this is what the front is looking like after joining it and adding my strap. My strap was so long I had to cut it to 5 inches. For the front also I went ahead to join it together and I sewed the allowance downward to create a channel there to pass my rope through and I also went ahead to sew my darts. I'm going to be measuring that part to the slit line to see how long it is to know what the length of my rope is going to be and the rope that i cut out is 22 inches so i'm going to sew the fabric into a rope on my machine and pass it through the channel i just finished sewing the rope and i sewed my hand needle to the tip and i'm going to use it to pass in what through the channel i made two channel one for one side and one for the other side so i saw two rope that will be passing inside the two channels After passing the rope through the channel, I'm going to draw it to the tip a bit, then stitch both sides so it will not come off. After stitching that area, I'm going to take my half length and notch it at the middle. And I'm also going to notch the middle of my skirt. Then I'm going to match the two middle I just notched together and I'm going to start pinning from that middle. After pinning it, I'm going to sew on the straight line I pinned.
For the back piece, I went ahead to turn it with my face in the half length. I added my darts to the skirt and added my zip. I also added the strap for the hand to the back also. I connected both of them together inward. Then I'm going to place both the back and the front together because it's already joined together. Then I'm going to insert my body measurements and sew it downward. I'll be pinning the two arm all together. So guys, this is the finished look of the gown. It's so beautiful. I can't wait to rock it. The cow neck, the slits, the roach, everything is giving. So you can decide to draw your roach upward or leave it down. It depends on what you want. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something from it. Please like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.